Hey everyone, Sirkin here, and today, well before we get started, I just want to let you all know I'm in Fossil Island doing a shot for a yak track. And yes, I know this is, no one calls it Fossil Island one, but I'm still calling it anyway just for sure, and also because it, it's what it used to be called. Now, today, I'm reacting to another of, uh, hang on a minute, okay, uh, Protox's uh, videos called New, um, T tier 95 bow and gray abilities we feel. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know which, how that happened. Alright, so let's start the video. Just uh, give it a minute. I'm sorry, Lats has just been a jerk. Alright. Hello and welcome to video breaking down all the juicy details shared in the recent multi-hour livestream about the new elite dungeon, the Zamrak boss and his rewards, the wilderness rework, and more. It looks like we're here in Inferno. Well, I mean, the background. If you enjoy all kinds of runescape content, it is Inferno, content, then that'd be interesting. The Wait, news, then how would the sword be... You know what? Starting off the we'll elite dungeon, this elite dungeon will be unique and different to every other elite dungeon we know. First of all, mm -hmm. scalable for one to five players, where the health of monsters inside will scale evenly with yeah, the amount of bad players guys. inside. This means that if there's five players inside the dungeon, monsters will have five times the amount of health than if you were doing solos. The elite dungeon preceding the Zamrak boss fight is also affected by enrage, where enemies gain more health, and can even change entirely if the enrage is high enough. Which means you could encounter different mobs at the same barrier the next time you run through the dungeon. This elite dungeon only features one main boss, yeah, although you will need to demon. kill two man mandatory mini-bosses to get through the dungeon itself. These mini-bosses are fixed ones. and will spawn in the exact same location every single time and do not move around. The mini-bosses will have their own unique rewards which are the slivers you've already been obtaining for these Amarak invasion events. These can be used to combine and create some kind of enchantment which you can use on nine different items you can see on screen now. Mm. The effect these enchantments provide remain a mystery although it's safe to say that they're going to be a buff for all these items. These regular drops inside the elite dungeon should be more rewarding than normal elite dungeons according to the J mod. The reasoning behind this is that players who don't like bosses will be able to run for the trash mobs and still make some money. In case you haven't noticed there seem to be some newly updated models for existing That's creatures and unless these are completely new including what looks to be a Hellhound, Harrier Fiend, and Ice Fiend. Yeah, they, they look pretty cool. You know, when, you know, Ancient Summoning for uh, Summoning Ocelotti? I hope we get to have some new, you know, demons to tame, like these ones. That'd be cool. You know, like, tame, it's like Pokemon, except it's RuneScape, and the, and the demons are Pokemon. Oh, hang on, sorry. Alternatively, what I'd like it to be an ice fiend could also be a water fiend. Now you'll be able to start at the Zamrak boss every single time without running through yeah, the entire dungeon. Yeah, it could be a water fiend. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Next, we move to the Zamrak boss, which is of course also scalable up to a maximum of five players. He looks awesome. Now, the boss in the elite dungeon will feature three different game modes: story mode, which will actually allow you to get loot this time making this boss accessible for more nice. than just good DVMers as you take 90% less damage in story mode. There will also be a normal mode which they mention is harder than the Elder Borders dungeon bosses, so something for some intermediate to high level PVMers. And finally in Rage Mode, which is basically infinite difficulty, although they did mention a hard cap of 60,000 in Rage, which they expect oh no more reach in the coming years, and if they do, they will that's just extend it upwards. Now, while the boss is a solo boss, the Hang on, I just want to say, that's a pretty awesome sword right there. Yeah, it looks awesome than it already looks. Garrett Sky, who is a fellow content creator and was a guest during the live stream as he tried the boss during development, mentioned that it flows better, or the mechanics flow better, in a group of two to five players compared to solo kills. Both him and the J-Mold mentioned that this was one of the most different boss fights ever and not really comparable to anything we have in the game. The reason for this is because during the boss fight you'll be able to activate these symbols, pads, known as edicts, yeah. and once you turn the on the hang on, hang on, and add, you'll hang get on a minute. stronger for zap Sorry about that everyone, it's just I just don't want to get copyright there. Yeah. You know the whole ads. 
get stronger, but Zamrak will also become stronger and apply some kind of debuff hex to you. The reason oh these pads are unique is because it allows you to choose what you want to activate during the boss, which could have a heavier impact on your character and the boss fight at higher rages. Speaking of enrages, the HP scaling does stop at a certain point, which means you won't have a boss fight which will last two hours, as players already had pretty long boss fights going for 4,000% in Radar Blazer. What HP it stops at wasn't clarified. Now what was clarified is that the enrage will go up with a flat 10% every single kill, and if you're doing this boss in a group, you can actually start at the highest enrage of the player in your group that has the highest enrage. So let's say you have 200% enrage, and your bunny has 1,000% enrage. Well, you can start a duo at 1,000% enrage, but after, after killing the boss, boss if you manage to stay alive, mm. you will still, still only go up 10% to 210%, and your body will go up to 1,000%. 1, if you're wondering what the drops in both solos and groups, these will be fixed and do not really change, and there's no such thing as streaking this boss, which in my opinion is a good thing, because, because I hate, I hate losing, losing a chance, chance to do some lag or stupid bug. bug. Yeah. Luckily, according to Mod Sponge, you worked on this boss, boss and Mod Ram, it'll be bad luck. <laughs> I'm like sorry, let me pause it. Yeah, that's a uh, Squirt except Samurai mode. <laughs> that's funny. That is so funny. You can go dry on the red drops at Samurai, which is fantastic to hear, especially so early on. Before we get to the rewards themselves, you have some kind of mini quest you can complete after killing Samurai once, which you can start visiting and understay on the first floor of the Falco Castle. Alright, let's talk about the rewards. Now, the slivers you can obtain during the current demon invasion events every single day, and the elite dungeons exclusively after the boss releases, can be used to upgrade nine different items which you can see on the screen now. What this, what this exactly does, does isn't clear yet, but it's definitely going to be above. above. Next, Next we have, we have the T95 bow, which is known as the bow of the last guardian, which, which drops in three different pieces in any mode, much like the Elder's crossbow. Hey, this bow has a passive? passive. I'm sorry, I gotta pause there. Just, um, the last uh, guardian, yeah, that's pretty cool, man, because, uh, you know, world guardian and guardian of graphics, yeah. Where if you gain 8 stacks, it will do damage to your target based on your last used ability. Oh, and yeah. then of course we set the stacks. The special attack will do a hefty chunk of damage and reduce the amount of stacks required to launch the passive damage boost to 4. I would not be surprised if this is a huge damage boost to damage melee. Yeah, that would also, be the effect, the special attack itself looks really cool. Look yeah, I agree. Yeah, I know. The last guardian will be dieable with every single die in the game. Next we have a new 4 piece T95. Melee armor set known as the best to have. This, this armor set will have slightly more defense bonuses than tier 70 armor like Vandals, and will have the strength bonus of a tier 100 armor set. Hmm. But that's not the reason you want to be using this armor set. Have a look at the set bonuses. The 2P set bonus allows you to gain 50% adrenaline back every 18 seconds after casting an old ability. If the, if the ability is reactive, in fact, fact you will instead generate 20% adrenaline instantly. The three-piece bonus extends preserve duration by six seconds. That's, That's almost, almost like planted feet, feet for preserve, which is insane. Yeah, and the four-piece bonus increases your maximum adrenaline by 20. That's, That's huge. Another thing that will come into this update, update will be a new melee basic, basic ability known as Chaos War, which will double, double the damage of your next hit. hit. Yes, yes, the basic, basic ability, ability will be double, double the damage of your next hit. hit. So if you combine this with the new F spec Chrono Ultimate ability, you'll be doing, doing huge damage. damage. There will There'll also be something known, known as a blank, blank codex, codex which you get as a drop, drop and then craft into, into the greater sunshine, sunshine and greater depth with this ability. This ability. What these nice. codexes will do is basically upgrade your sunshine and depth swiftness as if you have a blank feet, so extend it by 7.8 seconds, except. You'll, You'll also, also retain, retain the area of effect, effect damage effect, effect that, that your sunshine and death swords normally, normally have on enemies. enemies. That's, That's minimal, but still, still nice to have. have. Mm. This is definitely something I'll be aiming for because I do, I do not, not like switches, switches I have to use every, every single one. Finally, yeah. Of Switching, uh, wait, wait, hang on, let's be blind. I don't want to, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, I was looking at this for a bit, uh, yeah, it's just, I'm really wanting big in case I, Miss her, you see, when I miss her, I might get the wrong idea. Definitely something I'll be aiming for because I do not like switches I have to use. Yeah, they're pretty sorry. Except, you'll also retain the area of effect, damage effect that your sunshine and death swords just normally have on enemies. That's okay. minimal, but still nice to have. It's definitely something I'll be aiming for because I do not like switches I have to use every single one. 
rotation. All right. I'll figure it out later. Which you can also get a skin for after things I'm right 500 times, and there will be titles for both group and solo and rage. You can see these on screen now. Pause the video if you want to read them. Now, one, one drop that isn't listed here is also, also one of the rewards of the daughter. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. 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 Try again. Also, before I even pause, I, I just want to say sorry. Just I was gonna rewind and check and understand the whole, the whole pet thing, but I'll do that later. This here is also, also one, of one of the rewards of the Daughter of Chaos Quest, which you can apparently also obtain from the Elite Dungeon or Samurai. Wasn't really clarified which of the two, but yeah, you can get it from the DM as well if you don't like quests. The quests will mainly focus on you playing as Moya the Wilderness and will also give you some equipment overrides as a reward. Well, Ooh. now also launching an August in combination with the quest is the Wilderness Reborn update, which will visually update the Wilderness, but also mechanically change the Wilderness forever. Nice. There was a lot of talk about how they changed the environment, added new ash, mist, and rain effects that make the Wilderness feel more doom-like and evil and walking around it, but I want to focus on the mechanical changes here because the visuals are something you'll be able to see on the video now and explore in person once the update releases. So by far the most interesting mechanical change they gave more detail. Hang on. Another ad. <laughs> Sorry, what's up all these ads? I mean, come on. Alright, let's continue. Where the longer you do activities in the wilderness, the higher the threat level will become, but the bonuses apparently become better too. Oh boy. Sure they specifically meant bonuses, or just you being able to do more in the wilderness, Beaver Demon. We'll see when they He's not on your so side, the unfortunately. The threat level is to make surviving in the wilderness and doing things in the wilderness like Slayer more and more difficult the longer you stay there. Once you leave, it resets back to zero, but if you stay there for longer, it will increase. And what the threat level does is throw attack to you. The volcano will literally erupt and throw attack to you, which will do more and more damage depending on your threat level. And monsters will spawn out of nowhere, which increase in difficulty and numbers. And as you can see, that threat level seems pretty serious because stuff like Abyssal Lord, Ripper Demon, and other high level sleepers spawn. And it's multi combat in the entire wilderness, so you will have some trouble with these, given that you aren't using very good gear. They also mentioned that this will become the best Slayer training area in the game, and speaking of Slayer, the Commander of Slayer Master will receive a huge overhaul, and he seems to be located near the wilderness agility course now, or that's a possible second location, just like the Nyekia, aka. Oh, I know that guy with the uh, Arapet. Well, now they briefly talked about new Slayer rewards like Reaper Refreshes, a possibility to earn Reaper points, and to obtain Death Dark to Dark. They also talked about Warbands and how it will stay in the wilderness with PvP turned on, although they don't yet know how the opt-in system will work. It will likely have something to do with the Demonic Skull, where you'll have an incentive to turn it on for some kind of bonus. Finally, they mentioned that the Wilderness Rework Wilderness Area will have some additional content coming to it in the future. And with that being said, we've covered everything you need to know about the recent okay. live stream, and I hope you guys enjoyed this little summary Thanks. of a very long live stream. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below, and maybe even consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah, peace, man. Okay, now, that's my reaction. Now, uh, now let's do a little couple of recaps. Now, first of all, uh, hang on a minute. Let's, uh, there it is. Okay, a mammoth? Really? Okay. I mean, that's... I'm pretty sure that's impossible. I mean, I'm pretty sure in reality, mammoths, uh, sorry, mammoths, even though they're extinct, are not usually fond of the heat. Usually, they have w this far end, oh, <laughs> a player, and, oh, a steel thing. So, anyways, woolly mammoths prefer the cold and the chill areas, not fire thing. And, like, for example, Skyrim. <laughs> I'm sorry, the steel thing's in the camera. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, uh, um, Mammoths are weak against fire damage, as shown in Skyrim. Well, wait, did I say Skyrim before? Uh, yeah, sorry. And I'm not sure how this mammoth's gonna work, since they prefer the cold in the world of RuneScape. Well, if I remember correctly, in Jimmy's field, you know, the one with the, uh, uh, the, uh, one, the, the number one instead of I. Yeah, I see, uh, it involved mammoths in the wilderness. So, I'm not sure how's that literally impossible or physically impossible sorry 
Okay, so now here's the uh, thing. I'm on. Uh, here we are. Here we are. The rewards. Now here that we're gonna have a uh, a uh, a new pet. Yeah, that's cool, man. I mean, we don't get much demon pets than usual. I mean, we have lots of demon bosses. Yeah, it says here, uh, you'll... Oh, yeah, it says if you defeat Samurai 500 times, you'll unlock a meta pet skin for Samurai the Rack. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool. Alright, okay. Alright, so, uh... Okay, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. And, uh, again, be sure to check check out this field, the actual field itself, if you if you want to, on the link below. And if you like the actual field, be sure to like and subscribe to his channel. And be sure to leave some comments for me and, uh, Protux. And, sh and uh, tell us uh, what you think. Alright, bye everyone.